Now to get the Palestinian perspective is the head of the mission to the United Kingdom, Hossam Zomlot. Hossam, thank you for your time. A quick question first. Were you surprised or how surprised were you about the uh, push that Israel made into Rafah uh, on short notice? Not at all surprised. Uh, Netanyahu, Israel uh, have uh, literally uh, broken every international red line, including not invading uh, Rafah. He is negotiating, that is Netanyahu and the Israeli government, they are negotiating with the blood of our children. And it is af after seven months, this is really appalling, after the genocide of the last seven uh, months, the loss of life, uh, what it shows is that A, Israel has no uh, uh, iota of respect for uh, the sanctity of human life, and B, the international community is failing to exercise any pressure or leverage for that matter uh, on such uh, a rogue state of Israel. I know you don't speak for Hamas, of course, but uh, the, the reason the Israelis gave uh, for, give, for going in like this was because they said that Hamas was firing at the checkpoint and is intentionally trying to provoke Israel into action into Rafah. Well, the mediator here is Egypt, Qatar, and the U.S. have presented uh, a deal uh, for a ceasefire. And uh, I believe that all parties have accepted that deal. Uh, and there are reports that Israel has accepted such a deal beforehand. Uh, but now Israel is uh, uh, buying time and not wanting to accept an internationally endorsed uh, deal because simply Netanyahu has decided to favor himself uh, he thinks that stopping this aggression, uh, this genocide, is going to lead to ousting himself from office and, and maybe end up in, in court uh, and jail because of corruption charges and other charges. Uh, and therefore, uh, it is Netanyahu and this coalition of fascists uh, and supremacists who are now dragging the entire world into this immoral uh, uh, aggression against our people. There is a view that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's catering more for his coalition partners because otherwise it means political difficulties. They've threatened to, to kind of collapse the government if he doesn't go ahead with, with further action. Whereas, of course, at the international level, there's, there's a feeling that he's losing ground there. So it's, it's one side or the other he has to play to, and it seems it's the uh, domestic market he's playing to. Well, yes, because he doesn't see any real consequences so far. There are nothing. I, I mean, there is international outcry, but that is by the people. And we are following and you are following what is happening in U.S. campuses here in the U.K., all over the world. And this movement that is unprecedented in terms of its strength and continuity and sustainability and real passion for humanity. But the governments all over the world have really failed, particularly Western uh, governments have failed to exercise any sort of uh, pressure, have failed to deliver a message uh, to Israel and to Netanyahu that they mean business, they mean red lines. And Netanyahu has discovered all through the last seven months and all through the last seven decades that these are just words, hollow words, statements, sympathies, uh, but nothing is followed with concrete actions. And action is required. If Netanyahu hears that the U.S. and the rest of the world is imposing uh, an arms embargo on genocidal Israel. If he follows that there will be consequences in the International uh, Criminal Court and International Court of Justice, if they start getting sanctions on all the illegal settlements and all companies implicated in the, in the, in the occupation, uh, then they will begin uh, to listen. And if they also see a U.S. not hindering our efforts in the U.N. to become a state this coming Friday, the state of Palestine uh, is uh, presenting a resolution for the world to vote uh, for uh, uh, admitting the state of Palestine and giving it the state status in the General Assembly. And then we'll watch uh, what the world is going to do, particularly uh, the U.S. and some of its allies, because that is exactly uh, how you get Netanyahu listening, by action. If you recognize the state of Palestine, if you give people a real indication of the future, and if you sanction the illegality, then you'll see a change. All what we see now is just statements. I'll get on to both the student protests and the UN situation in a moment. Let me ask you, getting back to Rafa, from what the reports you have, how bad is the situation in terms of the humanitarian crisis, in your opinion? Catastrophic, uh, uh, Rez. You have 1.5 million uh, uh, innocent civilians. More than half of them are children sheltering in Rafah for the last so many months because the occupation authorities told them Rafah is a safe area. Go south, go south. And now there is nothing left that much in the north uh, to go back to. And every area Israel has so-called designated as a safe area has been bombed. No hospitals, no schools, as you know, no infrastructure, 
there is a near famine uh, situation because of the imposition uh, of the siege uh, and not allowing the unfettered access of humanitarian uh, assistance. And given all this, then you go and invade Rafah. It's just a recipe for a catastrophic massacres happening against the Palestinian uh, people with literally nowhere to go. You're going to invade a, a place, very small territory, that is Rafah. I was born Rafah. I know how small Rafah uh, uh, is. And hundreds of thousands of children just sitting ducks for Israeli war machine, uh, for their uh, 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 jet fighters, for their tanks, to literally decimate our children and the civilians so there. So that's why you have the U.S., saying Rafah is a red line, you have the UK saying Rafah is a red line, you have the UN uh, General Secretary saying is Rafah is a, is a red line, the EU, everybody is saying Rafah is a red line. But Netanyahu has grown familiar for simply crossing all uh, so, red lines. And as we just discussed, yeah. he simply can. I know there is no love lost between Fatah and Hamas, but how do you respond to the Israeli claims that Hamas essentially takes control of the aid and that it uses it to its own extent, you know, for its fighters and, and, and then oversells it, overprices it on the markets, that it has control of the aid and that it's not so much the outside world or Israel that's, that's uh, causing a problem here? We must stop following Israeli propaganda. Uh, they have been at it for a long time. Lies and lies and lies and twisting facts. Only listen to the UN, uh, uh, the UN is there to be followed. And the UN says that the only reason why you have a famine in Gaza, you have such a, a catastrophic situation is because of Israeli policy of actually imposing a, a famine, of restricting uh, uh, aid from uh, getting uh, to uh, Gaza. And you know, you have piles, tons and tons of aid waiting at the Rafah uh, crossing. And, and last night they have taken over, the Israeli occupation forces have invaded the Rafah uh, crossing. Now they are in control to prevent the flow of aid uh, uh, from uh, uh, arriving. So uh, let us not uh, twist the facts here. Israel, as an occupying power, as an aggression power, is fully responsible for the protection of civilians and for the provision of basic aid, uh, uh, even education and health uh, for the civilians under their occupation. And Israel has literally made mockery of international law over the last seven months, and particularly in Rafah now. Is Fatah in any position to help the people of Gaza? Well, this is not about uh, uh, political factions. This is about the national structures for the Palestinian people. And that is the, uh, the state of Palestine, that we are now providing the world with an opportunity and a vision to move forward, to turn this uh, tragedy into a momentum towards a resolution and towards peace and justice. Uh, but the state of Palestine is what provides for its people and what represents its people. And the government of the state of Palestine uh, is there that represents uh, all Palestinians. What I mean, uh, though, sorry, sure. Hussam, to interrupt you, but I mean, in real terms, is, uh, is Fatah in any way able to access Gaza in such a way as to help the people there physically? Well, that's why uh, our top priority right now is a permanent ceasefire, is an immediate and permanent ceasefire. And there is a government that was formed only last month, a Palestinian government, and its main task is to provide for uh, our people, to unite our geography, that is Gaza, the West Bank, and East Jerusalem, mm -hmm. and to unite our uh, people in one uh, uh, political system, and to provide and to deal with the sheer catastrophe that was yeah. created so, by the So Israeli physically you're unable to really, what I mean is physically you're unable to do anything right now because of the, the separation between the two. Physically, even international organizations, the UN has been bombed, the uh, World Kitchen has been, you know, you followed the seven aid workers slaughtered by Israel. Everyone who tries to do anything there is, is, is targeted by Israel. So physically, what stands between us and all that is a ceasefire. We need an immediate and permanent uh, ceasefire and we need to move immediately to deal with the uh, uh, sheer level of the humanitarian catastrophe and the rebuilding and the reconstruction and move swiftly from there to accountability because we need to ha hold every war criminal accountable so this is never repeated. We need to work with the international community to continue impo imposing sanctions on all the illegalities including the issue of arms exportation and we need to create the real track Even of ending this occupation mm. once and for all and that's what we're doing. 
accountability we are doing at the ICC as you are following and the ICJ. We are going to the UN. We went to the Security Council. The, the US veto intercepted us. But now the UN General Assembly, which is the will of the world, okay. all the countries, and you will see the consensus there. So we need to create a momentum where Palestinians have their national institutions. These national institutions are recognized and capable to provide for their people. What impact is the massive student protest that's spreading across the world having in essentially making a case for the Palestinian people? Immense. And this generation has, has inspired us all. I mean, this is historic in every sense. The last of such movements, student movements, was in 1968, the Vietnam War and the anti-Vietnam War. Uh, uh, you know, the students to take such huge responsibility on their shoulders simply because their leaders have failed miserably to do so, have failed to take action, is a source of hope. Hope. Uh, for a better uh, 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 world, a better future. Uh, and what the American students have done, what the British uh, only uh, yesterday, uh, it was coordinated. And this is the first time between the students of Oxford and the students of Cambridge here in the UK for uh, incumbent exactly the same way uh, as happening in the US, calling for uh, arms embargo uh, on Israel, calling for uh, action to be taken by uh, their governments, and uh, calling for their universities to divest, of course, uh, from uh, uh, these war crimes and, uh, and acts of genocide. And yes, this has really uh, created an avalanche of energy uh, that is coming from the youth, and the youth are the leaders of tomorrow, the leaders of the future, and we have a lot of uh, hope and certainty about the future because if you have the youth res you have the future well interestingly enough of course it's still the governments who have to make the decisions um perhaps with all these elections taking place this year that uh, these kind of stu the student presence might have some impact on the decision making do you believe that might actually happen though well if these countries call themselves democracies and if they see that uh, the, the overwhelming majority of their public, be it in America, be it here in the UK, from the first week of the aggression on Gaza, Israeli aggression, there were more than 70% of the British public with an immediate ceasefire. Uh, if these democracies really want to convince the rest of the world that they are democracies, they must listen to the vast majority of the public sentiments uh, uh, in their uh, respective countries. And I believe the, the people of the world has spoken, the people of the world has delivered their, uh, their verdict and their pressure. And I believe now countries like America, the US administration, uh, are not only allowing Israel to, uh, and, and being dragged by Israel, to actually uh, commit the genocide uh, uh, against the Palestinian people, to undermine the international order, but now is allowing Israel to actually undermining their own democracies, the US democracy. And we've seen the hor horrific scenes of the brutality of some uh, uh, American police and how they dealt with these uh, students. So it is to that far uh, 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 Western governments can go to just simply uh, uh, oppress and suppress their own people, their own, their own students, uh, for the sake of shielding and protecting Israel. It is unimaginable, unthinkable, uh, uh, the situation. However, all this points to one fact, that Israel has lost the support of the public in the U.S., in Europe and worldwide. Okay. And while governments are still clinching into the old uh, uh, modus operandi, uh, I think it will be a matter of when, not if, when governments will have to follow the pulse of their people. There in the UK, we have an election as well taking place. Uh, who's going to favor you better in your opinion, the Palestinian people, I mean? Um, is it going to be Sunak and the Conservatives or is it Keir Starmer and the, and the Labour government? Well, that, that question who can only be answered on the day of elections, and this is a matter for the British people to decide. But whoever wins this uh, coming election need to also listen to the British people, as okay. far as Palestine is concerned, as far as the foreign policy uh, is concerned, as far as the cries of the British public that Britain adopts a, an ethical foreign uh, policy, that it defends international law and international legitimacy, that it uh, implements universal values equally, that it, 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 it abandons the selectivity, hypocrisy and double uh, standards that we are all equal under international law. And I believe so, the next government, the next government will be under huge uh, public pressure in the UK here to do so.
And Osama, I just want to end with a thought. You, you were referring to the UN General Assembly having been blocked at the Security Council with the US veto, although you had a kind of massive backing elsewhere, it seemed. But you seem to think, the, you seem optimistic at least, the General Assembly might change the tide a little bit at least. What do you expect will happen next week? Well, we expect the world to actually uh, vote for what is right, vote for what is a universal consensus. Vote for, uh, 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 not a gift by the world, but a right for the Palestinian people. Our statehood, our right to self-determination is no gift of anybody or a favor by anybody. This is our birthright. It's our inalienable uh, right as a people on our land, occupied, brutalized, genocided, but people on our land with a recognized uh, government, so you will see an, uh, an unprecedented support by the world uh, for our quest to become full members of the UN, for our status to be uh, reassured, uh, and that will take us forward and will further isolate the position of the US uh, administration, uh, and perhaps uh, that historic process will, cultivate, will, will end in the US removing finally its veto power. Uh, over the right of the Palestinian people for uh, self-determination. So the whole idea mm. is we are not going to allow the U.S. to just use a veto power once and then we uh, rest. No, this will be endless. And, and if it takes every single session to take this application again and again until uh, we get where we need to do, we, 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 where we need to go. I'm sure we'll get to speak again. Hossam Zumlat, thank you. Thank you very much, Liz.